Historically, the G7 or G20 meeting has actually had an impact. If you remember back to the uh, peak of the, uh, the crisis in 2008, we had the London meeting that sort of uh, uh, created a fiscal stimulus and, and standing together in terms of, uh, of achieving something for the global markets, and they did, uh, at least for the short term. Uh, and I think to some extent, some people are hoping that Shanghai can be the same. But the problem this time is we have very, very divergent um, both monetary policy and fiscal policies. Think about the U.S. continuing. Stanley Fisher talked about the, the hawkiness in, in his monetary approach being that they still see a cycle which is for higher interest rate. At the same time, ECB goes into this meeting in, G20, uh, in Shanghai looking ahead to the biggest bazooka they ever launched in monetary policy in March. And and then on top of that, you have China who needs the devaluation. You have a U.S. who needs the devaluation of the currency. So we are coming from very diverse sort of attitudes towards the market. We have become intrinsically more focused on domestic agendas, certainly in China, security, and now another issue again. Uh, and, and hence, I think domestic agendas in the U.K., in the U.S., the U.S. election, in Europe with the, with the, the refugees, and, in, and, and certainly all over Asia, and Russia, to, to, to mention the last of the bigger ones, they are all concerned about domestic issues more than concerned about international, which means they will pay, pay lip service to coordination and doing better and looking after the world. But, but I know that the World Bank's president, who's going to attend the meeting, Kim, uh, during this week has said that we are coming for such different angles in terms of what we're trying to achieve that we will try to do what we can, but it looks very unlikely that this will be a significant event.